All right, we have your Bibles. I want to, let's, let's, let's look at the word a little bit. These are some things that our Lord put on my heart here to begin to share with the body. This, now, it's God's plan to bring us into full prosperity, all right? It's, you, must, you must keep that in mind. No matter what trials you face, no matter how things are, no matter when things you don't quite understand, know this, that it is God's design to get you where he intends you to be. And he worked relentlessly so to keep doing that until he can get us where he wants us to be so he can prosper us, so he can use us for his glory. He's such a good savior. So I want you to keep that in mind. All right, now, so the first thing he said, he wants us to respect the word of God and God himself, okay? So now, uh, I want to, well, let's see. I'm going to use a text. I want, to, I want somebody to find Matthew 4.4. 4. Who will do that? Lift your hands and tell me who will find Tricia. Okay, Mac, if you'll take um, Genesis 2.15-17. Uh, somebody take Proverbs chapter 2. Uh, okay. Trisha, let me give, I mean, Jesse, let me give you a shorter one. This is seven verses here. Take Deuteronomy, Jesse, you take Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 to 3. Uh, who's that? Uh, Toy, you take Proverbs chapter 2, 1 through 7. Somebody take Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Nidra. Somebody take Psalms chapter 1, all right, to pick up the first three verses. All right. Now, somebody take Psalm 119, verses 5 and 6. Josie. Somebody take Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. Wanda. Somebody take Psalm 119, verses 15 and 16. Anybody? Uh, Doris? Okay. Uh, Pam, if you'll take Psalm 119 verses 97 through 104. Okay. Somebody take Proverbs chapter 3. Um, uh, Lamont verses 1 and 2. Okay. Now, let's go. Matthew 4, 4, so stand if you will and read it real loud. All right, man shall not live by food alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. All right, we got this. Everybody got that? All right, this is, this is what God says. Genesis 2, verses 15 to 17. All right, now we have that command from God, right? Everybody see that? It's a, somebody say the word of God. Okay, Deuteronomy 8, verses 1 through 3.
right. Come on, let's give God praise for that. So, here he's telling Israel now, he said, okay, this is the second generation. He said, all right, you got to remember all the way God led you in this wilderness to test you, to prove this, to see what was in your heart, to see if you would keep God's command or not. Can you see God? Everybody see, what, see that? So sometimes we face things, we don't understand why, but there's purpose behind it. God wants us to be faithful in our testimony, to be faithful to him, right? And be faithful in our commitment, whether it be to love and whatever. So in other words, uh, he said, I was testing you to see what was in your heart. See if you would keep, really keep my command. So I allowed you to hunger and, uh, and then I fed you in a way that you didn't know about it. You didn't. But I did it all to make you understand. Man shall not live by food alone, but by every word. So I said with me, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now what we're doing is showing you, this is what God said to begin to reiterate certain things, show the scripture how God wants us to live by his word, right? And sometimes, you know, you read over the scripture, okay, well, that's, that's, that's later. But if God quickens your heart, then he says, that's what I want you to you know, to, to live by. I want you to, to do it. So Proverbs chapter two, verses one through seven. Everybody see that, right? Your God is still talking my, see my word, hear what I'm saying, it's going to prosper you, you know? All right, somebody read who got Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Isn't that good? Somebody give God a hand clap. Yeah. Hallelujah. So God is so eager to prosper us. He, he, I mean, I just love this. God's eager to prosper. Okay, Psalm 119, verses 5 and 6. Who has that? Joseph. So I'll never be put to shame when I have respect to all your sayings, all that you have, your commands. Whew, man, that's exciting. All right. Psalm 119, uh, verses 9 and 11. Psalm, thank you. Psalm 119, verses 15 and 16. Okay. Amen. Praise God. All right. Psalm 119, verses 97 through 104.
my goodness. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> There's so much about God's word. There's so much. And so, so what she just read is like the writer said, oh, I, oh, how I love his law. It's what I meditate on day and night. And God promises anyone that does it, it's going to prosper. Because what it does is shape your thinking. Isn't that right? And it causes our thinking to line up with God's will and his purpose. All right. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Wow, oh my goodness, look at that blessing. He said, I'm going to add years to your life. If you do, how many like some more years to your life? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is what God is saying. This is his promises in his word. All right. Now, so when we eat, we must have a healthy respect for the word of God. And if we revere him, then we will do our best to keep his word, right? And that's what God looks for. He'll give us the strength. He'll give us the grace. If God tells us to do something and then we feel like we don't have the strength to do it, then that's no problem. He's got the strength. But what he wants is us to say, well, Lord, I, if you give me the strength, you give me the grace or whatever I need, then I will do it. But he's looking for that attitude to say, your will, Lord, not mine, right? And he will help us because he'd rather us do his will than not do it. Okay. Um, this. <clears throat> okay, John. Hebrew. All right, let's see. John chapter. Okay, we got some more scriptures. John chapter 1. Who will take this? John chapter 1, uh, Michelle, verses 1 through 5. Okay. 2 Timothy 3.16, uh, 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 Larry, if you'll take that. Uh, Hebrews 4, 12, and 13, someone. Uh, yes, Sister Rose, Minister Rose. Okay, James 1, Anidra, verses 19 through 25. All right, are we ready? John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. So awesome. The word gave light. The word gives light today. It gives illumination. And it gives strength and life to us. So we keep that word. We look at that word and let God bless us. Okay, John. Uh, uh, Michelle, would you read also verse 14 in, in that same chapter? Amen. They're talking about Jesus. He's the word. Isn't that right? Okay. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Larry. Amen. So that, that word is an all-sufficient source, right? Amen. Hebrew 4, 4 verses 12 and 13. I remember seeing God's all-seeing eye, and uh, so, and I could see that word looking straight through me. I'm looking at this eye, and it was looking straight through this flesh. 
I said, good God Almighty. If I wanted to say, well, Lord, I love you, you know, and I, and I didn't love him, boy, he was looking straight through this flesh. He says, Phew. that's what Hebrews talking about. <laughs> Amen. I, I love the word because the word, the word, if I said, I'm, I'm this way in the Lord's word, his word is looking, isn't that right? James 1, verses 19 through 25. Reminded somebody told a story about the, the, de the deacon years ago. It was an old church, and this deacon he had a habit of saying, The Lord's talking to y'all, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> so the preacher would preach, he preach so hard, and the deacon said, after, after the service, he said, Boy, he said, Preach, he said, Yep, Rev, you, you, you got him today, man. I mean, you really. <laughs> and so <laughs> one day, everybody stayed home. <laughs> Everybody stayed home but the wooden deacon. <laughs> so the preacher preached so hard. And the, so the deacon went up there after me and said, Yeah, Rep, I tell you, boy, you did it again. He said, If they had been here, they'd have got it again today. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I just, that just popped up. I happen to thank the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Let's believe the word. Isn't that right? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let's make a pact today. Now we're going to try our very best with the help of God to live by his word. Now I want you to know this here. There's not a human alive that can stop you from prospering. Because God is bigger than any mortal flesh. And when you purpose to obey his word you can be under the you can be you you be like a bubble a bubble bubble i think it's bubble <laughs> in water have you ever seen when they take a, a, a balloon and push it down in the water and it boop, pops right up over there right you push it down over there boop, it pops up over here that's how it is when you apply this word, there's no situation, there's no person that can stop you from prospering. Because God will honor his word. So now let's make a pact to the Lord. Oh God, let me, let me strive to keep your word. Because this is your command. You want us to prosper. And uh, so don't worry so much about the devil. He's already defeated. Isn't that right? You don't have to really spend a lot of time worrying about him at all. Okay, the second thing. Everybody got that? Let's respect God's word, right? Remember that we must live by his word. Strive to live by the word. Second thing he said, respect God's leadership. Okay, now I got one, two. Two scriptures. I need someone to read Hebrews 13. Who will take, uh, yes, Linda, verses 7 and verse 17. Someone find Ephesians 4. Uh, okay, Jesse. Verses 11 through 16. All right. Now, the Bible said, anybody remember this scripture says, believe in the Lord. So shall you prosper. Yeah. Believe his prophets. And so shall you be established. Isn't that right? Now what this implies is that sometimes we can spin our wheels. When God wants to establish us. 
through his word. And uh, it's like he said, Moses, tell my people this. Moses, tell my people this. So God, if he has a group together, what he does is he talks to the leader. Say, tell my people this. Tell my people this. Tell my people this. So it's not the leader. Isn't that right? It becomes God moving upon the leader for the benefit of the body. Are you with me? Okay, so God says, uh, um, all right, so God says now, respect his leadership. Okay, somebody read Hebrews 13, oh, Linda, verses 7 and then verse 17. Amen. Come on, put your head together. <laughs> now I got to throw this little plug in here because we're. <laughs> Look at someone say, don't grieve the man of God. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist that. I just got, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get the other scripture here. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Yes. Amen. Is that it? That all of it? Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. What she just read, just summing up briefly, is it is the design of God to use the um, government of God, leadership, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers to equip the saints 
for the work of service and to so that that the body of Christ will come to its full measure maturity and so that it can be built up in love and mature speaking truth in love and then every joint must supply the giftings that God has put in them but they must develop to the point where they can function on that level are you with me so it's designed of God's government to work to make that happen so when the body cooperates then they're functioning according to the will of God and God adds now remember the gifts comes from God right so they have been anointed by God for a specific purpose. And so that's when, so when the people cooperate, then God divine will supply whatever grace, whatever healing, whatever is necessary to bring his people to the level of maturity so that they now can begin to function with the gifting that he's put in them. And so that this whole body will begin to function. Everything is functioning now because they've grown to the point where everybody doesn't understand what they're called to do and they're functioning and supplying. Applying, and so it, it's, it's like a building. It's like those bricks on the wall there. They are in place. It's like see, we see ourselves as bricks for the building of God. God being the light that dwells therein. But every brick must be put in place, right? And so you see that in the, the, the cement or, or the mortar in between those bricks. It's like the, the love that we have for each one will connect us together. I don't hear what I'm saying. But it's only when we get to the level of maturity in love. So if, if in other words, so if a person can't love and, and can't work with somebody, then that means they can't be fitted in. Anybody hear what I'm saying? It's very important. So, so it's the design of God's government to supply and impart, to teach, to develop to perfect or, con or, or complete whatever, repair, because that word in Greek also means repair, whatever is necessary to bring that person to that level of maturity so that they now can be fitted in the body properly. Do you see why there's so many people all over the place running around, don't have a church home, not committed to anything? They can never fulfill God's divine purpose. I've seen that happen so long, God, and that's why God told me to start the school of the prophets. He said, there's so many people that I have called to this prophetic office, but they don't understand the way I work. And so they may be in a church there, they have that gift and they try to use it. And then maybe the, the leaders or the pastors that, that maybe not understand it, they shut them down because they don't understand what, what, what's what. And so they'll leave that church and they'll go somewhere trying to be used. Are you hear what I'm saying? And so they go there since they're not fitted in. So they, since they have matured, learn to take something. You know what I'm saying? So they have matured so they don't know how to love. And so they end up getting hurt after hurt after hurt after hurt. And so they never allow God to fit them in. They just didn't know. They didn't understand the process of God. And so now I watched a person uh, not too long ago pass. And that person was one of the most gifted persons that I've seen. But I looked on her face. She was so full of pain. I mean, really hurts. She had to give. But she had so much pain. And when she dispensed it, it cut like a knife. And so she just kept getting rejected. She died so unfulfilled. And all that giftedness, I said, dear God, what a waste of a gift. I mean, she had gifts. And so God said, I want you to start the school for the prophets. And he said, there are people I want to develop. I want to teach them wisdom and understanding and how to submit themselves and how to grow until I can mature them to let them be used on a larger scale. And so that's why we did the School of the Prophets. That was 
That was his idea. And uh, so I've used it up as an opportunity to say that uh, I can appreciate the people that have humbled themselves to be, to be, be taught. And uh, I remember the Lord said to me about a year ago, he said, a lot of people are very gifted, but they, can't, they won't fulfill my purpose because they won't allow me to bring them in. And that hurts the heart. That hurts when you know and you see people that have such giftedness they can be such a blessing to the body of Christ but they don't understand God's way of love they don't understand God's wisdom so I'm thankful for you that are here because if you didn't want to do and be what God wanted you to be you wouldn't be here so let's give the Lord a hand clap for you all right so so we pointed out here uh Respecting God's leadership. I got a couple of examples that was brought back to me. And please, this is not about me. Because if I decided, the Lord decided to take me and, and my wife and pastor somewhere else. Now, you know, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, I'm just trying to give you an idea. <laughs> Don't get no funny ideas. But anyway, <laughs> but point that I want to make is this year. Then the person coming behind me can have your respect because they've been taught well. I mean, because you've been taught well, right? So this is the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, there was a man, he, he was a mechanic. And I want to word this so that if he goes out on the YouTube, if, if they hear it, then they'll know, because there's not anybody from here and all that stuff. But anyway, this, 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 there was this man, he was a mechanic. And he was pretty good, too. And uh, so the church bus, the church bus, it was a bus, that got out of commissioning, so uh, the pastor told him if he would work on it. So he worked on it most of the day. And so he got it fixed. And so they, we had to take a trip to Richmond, the church, and the pastor was speaking in Richmond. And um, so at the, in the early afternoon, the pastor said, Did you get it fixed? He said, I got him fixed. She's ready. Now, here's the pastor. He's not a mechanic. Didn't know nothing about nothing, okay, except he was anointed, all right? You got to follow me. So he said, uh, don't you think you better try it out and uh, test, test it first? Nah, uh, no need. He said, it's fixed. I, I know it's fixed. This is the mechanic. He said, it's fixed. So he said, yeah, I, you know, I... I'm not doubting that, he said, but maybe you should just try it out. Since so he said, no, 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 no. He wouldn't, he wouldn't test drive it. In other words, he was saying, I'm the mechanic, you the pastor, so stay in your lane. All right. He didn't say that, but that was his implication. So the pastor said, okay, all right. And I, I'm there now, I'm here. So he went on, so we got ready that evening. And people loaded up on the, on the bus. We headed to Richmond. Well, the church bus got started. We got on the highway, and it could only run 30 miles per hour. <laughs> he could not. He didn't test it. He thought he knew. And so the pastor, he pulled off the side and said, well, is everything all right? He said, well, I don't know. I don't know. It, just, it won't go any faster than 30. We had to go to Richmond 30 miles per hour. <laughs> because this mechanic wouldn't listen. He thought he knew. So the man of God didn't know mechanics, but he was anointed. Can y'all hear what I'm trying to say? So, so God... Touched him and say, have him to test drive it. But he, he wouldn't listen. So we suffered. Every, everything suffered was like, God, this is boring. This is crazy. <laughs> Another example he bought for me. Okay. This one has to do with me. When I uh, finished high school, I was good at math. And I was good at spelling. 
It was just God given, you know. So the pastor, he didn't finish high school. He learned a lot, though. He was shocked, but he, he didn't finish high school. So he was kind of twiddling, trying to compute some things. So in my thinking that I, you know, well, this is an area he don't know. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that he's an expert, and that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to emphasize this important thing that when a person is anointed, you have no idea how God can use them as a leader, and God will compensate. And so anyway, he was trying to figure out something, and the little pride that I had because he couldn't figure it out, I kind of let him struggle to see, see him go through trying to compute and so on. Do you not know something came very similar to that, and, 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 and I was going to help him and the Lord allowed my mind to go blank and I could for the life of me figure because of my attitude. He wouldn't even let me figure it. And I was like, now I know I can, you know. So I never forgot that lesson. I never forgot it. And, and there, here's an example with Ahithophel. Anybody read that? About, remember him in the Bible? This man was the wisest counselor. And this man, whenever he gave counsel, the Bible said it was like an angel spoke to you. God never let his word fall to the ground. But he came against David. And when he came against David, he gave counsel. And God, and David said, Lord, uh, um, bring to naught the counsel of Ahithophel. Of, of because he was against him. At, and, and because there's another story, I won't get into that. But anyway, he was against him. So when he did, as wise as that person was, God literally caused his counsel to fail. And he had never done that all the days of his counsel, but he got out of line. You hear what I'm saying? So I learned through that and other little experiences that do your best to follow leadership. If you know that they're godly leadership. Because God will bless you and he will keep you from a lot of sores and pain if you do so. And I'm, I'm sharing with you these things here because I feel God gave it to me. One other thing here, and he's just kind of bringing. There was a man, and this man was a very goodly man. And I shared this before. He had a business and didn't. But somehow or another, he got the wrong attitude. He was talking to two other guys in the, in the church and just talking. Just running the pastor down. I don't know what the problem was. So finally he called me and says, uh, could you, can you um, come by and pray for my business? He said, I don't know, because business was flourishing. And all of a sudden it just went down, really down. And he told me to come by. If I could, you come by. So I was the assistant there. And so I went by there. And so before I went by there, I was praying to the Lord. I said, well, Lord, what, what's, what's wrong with the business? What's, what's, why is this happening here? And then the Lord showed me, he and two others, they just got together. They just talking, talking about pastor. So I told him what I saw. And he repented of talking and talking. And as he repented, and he repented to the pastor and, and, and before, when he was there praying, and God immediately started turning this business around. This thing is so real, y'all. You try to understand what I'm trying to say. God want to prosper his people, but there are things that he wants us to understand the way God works. Now, we ain't done yet. Now, there's another thing here. Look at somebody say, he ain't done. Now, here's the thing that I want you to really follow to as well. Um, God says he wants us to expose not only ignorance, but demons. Now, now, I want you to, in your mind, write this down. I want you to think about it. Back here some months ago, God said there are demons in, in people now. And I don't mean that everybody's got demons, so please, I'm not, I'm not oppressed with that. <laughs> I understand what I'm saying. But I'm, I want you to hear me. Before I 
proceed. Remember this. And one of the reasons Satan was fighting so hard because he didn't want me to talk about this part. And, and I know him, see. I, I know him. He, he, he. But the Lord says there are demons there and, and people. And he says, get this now. He said they are, they are hoping not to be discovered. They are hoping not to be discovered. So that means if they are not exposed and if they are not discovered, they are hindering God's people. Do you think God is happy about that? When Christ died that we might be free? He's not happy about that. So, and um, demons are not fallen angels. I don't know if you, somebody might have that, because I thought it for years that demons were fallen angels. I heard that, I heard people say it, but they are not fallen angels. There was a creation, there was a, 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 a led by Satan and Ezekiel talked about how he uh, his kingdom that he had and he resides in the second heavens, Satan and, and his kingdom and all that stuff but the creation that was here before there was chaos in the world and God had to redo and that's why he said uh, in the beginning God created heaven and earth and the earth was void and without form God says, after he made Adam, be fruitful and multiply. And what's that next word? Replenish. How can you replenish something that has never been? It had to be something that existed, right? Replenish the earth. Well, anybody heard about the Neanderthal man? Cro-Magnon man in, in history? It's real. The fossils proved that they existed, right? Long before the creation. So, what are you saying? They were those in Satan's kingdom. And before he fell, he was the anointed cherub. And uh, he had great favor. But then, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will be like the most high God. And so then, he began to rebel. And God kicked him out and, and his angels. Now, the angels are reserved in everlasting chains of darkness. They're not roaming the earth. Demons, I mean, the angels that fall, fall, fell. They're not roaming the earth to do evil. So if you heard that, dismiss it. It's not true. Anyway, uh, so these spirits have been on earth before. And uh, they lived in these here. But when the creation was destroyed, you can't destroy the spirit itself. So they exist still. And they want to get in a body because they are familiar with earth. Are you hearing me? So they want to get live in a body. Now, they cannot do their damage and their evil deeds as, effective, as, as, as effectively as they can when they get in a human body. The human body is legal on earth. Are you still with me? The human body is the only legal thing on the earth. That's why you don't see angels walking around every day. They're not legal on the earth. Only humanity is legal. So demons know that if they're going to uh, oppress man, they need to get into man. To be legal. And they can do all their evil deeds. That's why you have murdering spirits. That's why you have all this stuff like that. Because demons get in people and now they're legal to do stuff that they couldn't do before. So as Christians, we must understand that. So now, so I don't want you to be, feel spooked, but I want you to get this. When Jesus came on the earth, he didn't come to the sinners, people that never knew God. He came to the Jews, right? You all know that the Jews, all the Jews knew the word, right? They knew the word because of the way that they, they practiced it, that the Jews had, I mean, they would train their children from the time that they could even function. 
scriptures, the holy scriptures. So when Jesus came, he came to his own, right? But his own needed help. They needed deliverance, right? And so when you see the pattern of Jesus, he cast out many spirits. He didn't go to the Gentiles, right? He went to the Jews. There were one or two that he went to, you know, but other than that, he, 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 he would not go. He would let the church go to the, to the Gentile. But to his people, he came to set them free. And there were many demons cast out. Now, demons have the right to come into people's lives when there is sin. They have a right to come into people's lives uh, if people dab in the alcohol. They have a right to come from, move from one uh, generation to another through the bloodline. They do that. And so that's how they continue their kingdom. And so when Jesus died to set us free, he wants, remember Paul and, the, and, and all the other apostles, they did the same thing that Jesus did. Isn't that right? Anybody hear me? <laughs> Getting quiet here. Okay. I'm trying to teach you something that's very, very vital. I know what I'm saying. So when the apostles came, they carried on the same works. That Jesus did. They cast out demons. They healed the sick. Regardless, there may be some have said, well, there ain't no such thing as demon. Yes, they were. So the point that I'm making is through the bloodline, spirits have passed down, through acts of sin, through traumatic experiences, they have gain interest into people's lives. Why do God want to set us free? To deliver us from those powers that keep us from submitting to God, submitting to his leadership. Now, yeah, I want you to get this. Here's, here's, here's what, before, before you throw, hopefully you don't throw a stone, but let me, let me show you something. I said, Lord, okay, I, you know, what are a few, some of the prevailing spirits. I, I know that, you know, they, they, you, you wouldn't dare try to give me all of those. That, But what are two or three of the prevailing spirits among us? You ready? You got your seatbelt on? The first one he gave me was rebellion. He said... That's, that's the first prevailing spirit among us, he said. Spirits of rebellion. So now as I looked up the word, the, the, the word rebellion, it had its origin in rebelling against authority. Y'all with me? Where does that start? It starts with children and their parents. Are you with me? That's where it starts. A mother or a father raised a child and the child maybe gets whippings or scoldings and treatments that they can't understand, that they don't agree with. And so they start to act out and get frustrated. And as those Disciplines from the parents continue. I guess it's safe to say disciplines. As they continue, then the child starts to rebel. And once the child starts to rebel repeatedly, very important, then they open themselves up for a spirit of rebellion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is That's why the scripture says, obey your parents. In the Lord. God knows. He understands how it's set up. So when a person resists their parents, as, and if they do it consistently and continually, then that door springs open for a spirit of rebellion, and that spirit will come right in. Case in point, we had, uh, when we were over that F FOE, no, not FOE, over there on uh, Little Creek Road. 
There's another minister, lady minister, and her and her granddaughter and daughter came. And the granddaughter was probably about 13. She had begun to rebel against her mother like really bad. Her mother exhausted her means of trying to sub subdue her. But when that spirit came in, then she could not handle her anymore. That's one of the ways how you know when a spirit moves in because you can't tame a spirit. You can't talk to a spirit and that spirit will submit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So once that spirit comes into that child, whether son or daughter, you cannot talk to them and make them submit. That's how you know a spirit has moved in. Well, this child was 13 years old and the, the mother was with such pain and frustration came to us. Can you pray for my daughter? So we prayed and more specifically, Wanda prayed. And as she was praying, she discerned how to pray. And she just, boom, before she knew it, took authority over the spirit of rebellion and commanded to loose this child in Jesus' name. Then immediately the child broke down and just started crying and crying. That spirit was broken that instant. And the child repented up to her mama. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They're subtle. They exist. And when they come in, you cannot try and tame a child that carries a spirit of rebellion. Now, if something has, doesn't happen and they don't get help, they will, that spirit will just live with them. And they'll grow up to become adults and they become rebellious at anything that they don't like. Anybody hear me? Because that spirit is there and it's just lying dormant and at the proper time. And so when that person tries to get close to God, that spirit will start acting up. And leadership may say, do so and so. And that spirit of rebellion will speak through the person, the person don't even sometimes don't even know what's what's going on. They just they don't they don't understand. They think it's just them. So they say, "Well, I ain't doing that." But a consistent, "I ain't doing that." I'm not. It shows that that spirit had never been cast out. Uh, Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. I know I'm coming heaven deep, but I believe God gave me to tell it. So that spirit is there, and God has. To get to the root of when that spirit went into that child's life. And bring healing. And that child must repent. And when they do and express faith toward God, God will break that rebellious spirit from off that person now if it hasn't been done and they're still adult they can be in the, they can be saved and in the lord and still that spirit he may not be able to have his way all, all the time but it will at strategic times act up and so the lord said the, the, the prevalent among the spirits sad to say even among us is a spirit of rebellion now, has anybody, does anybody know what I'm saying? All right. So, I remember Lamont sharing God showed to you, didn't he? I'm sure he may have showed to some others. So, I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. But I want you to understand how those spirits work. Now, if a demon is there, lodged in the body or emotion or whatever, then that spirit, at some point, when the pressure gets on him to leave, he's going to act up. And he's going to cause that person to act up. You would, because he does not want to leave. And so, what happens now is, so, people are not against leadership. If they're saved, but guess who is against leadership? The spirits. 
are against leadership because they know that they leadership has the authority and not only leadership but people have authority to cast them out so they do not want to be discovered I'm exposing them today because they don't want to be discovered they want to continue to make a person rebel and the person think it's them so they never ask for help in that sense because they just think, well, they just have an attitude. But it's more than they just have an attitude. That thing was in there for years since their childhood. And this is why God says, I want to heal my people. Because if we don't understand what's there. We're just going to continue. That's why every person, whenever we have healing, uh, 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 an altar call as far as healing, and you, God talking about healing of members, healing emotions, if you, if, if, if you have the slightest doubt that you haven't been healed, you should make your way to the altar. Just out of mere respect for God and the fact that you don't know your heart. You should have that kind of humility. So, and God... See, it takes humility many times to confess and acknowledge where you are. You see what I'm saying? It really takes humility. And um, I can tell on myself. People won't get mad when you, when, you, when you point out your own sin. All right? I remember one time somebody was telling me about my family, my, my situation, my marriage. Boy, I was, I got to get a little warm inside. I said, ain't none of your business. You know what I'm saying? But they were telling the truth. So I had to go back later and repent. You hear know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is a person don't know the full condition of their heart. That's why it's so important to be humble. It's so important. And I remember praying for a lady, and she's not here. She's not a part of work now. But I, God said, call this person up and pray for her mind. Well, she was a very intelligent person, so she could have said, don't you dare try to embarrass me. But she didn't. She says, she got to the altar, and this was her testimony. She said, well, Lord, I don't, I don't know what, he's, what he sees and what you're saying, but I open myself. And as soon as she said that, the power of God hit that woman, and she let out a scream, and that thing looted from her mind. But it had oppressed her so many years. But God can't do nothing until we agree with him. Some of you have a problem in your mind, but you really have to understand that God can break this thing. But you have to be humble enough to want the help. God is good. You remember when Jesus was at a certain place, he was there preaching, and this mighty Jesus, the, all the miracles he worked, the Bible says he couldn't do, he couldn't do very much there. All he could do is lay hands on a few sick people. Unbelief. Unbelief will stop a person from getting stuff. But this Jesus wants to help. This power is so great. It is so great. He can heal a person just like that. But if we don't understand how spirits can stand up and say, oh, don't go to the altar. You know, I've been there. You know, there ain't no need to go to the altar. There ain't nothing going to happen. Or da, 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 da. But they talk to people. And if people obey demons, trust me, you will never get the help that you need. But when a person says, you know what? And sometimes God, bless his heart, he overrides and say, go to the altar. And when the person goes to the altar, God meets them. See, what God needs is faith and obedience. He can do the hard stuff. He, he doesn't have a problem. God can set anybody free. He, he can do it to the drop of a hat. But he cannot override our will. If I say to God, Mm -mm. Listen, if God tells me to do this, if he say, okay, he say, call this person out 
and pray for them, pray, pray with them for so-and-so. And I say, I don't think so, God. Now, he may want to help that person, but if I don't cooperate with him, they may miss their blessing that day because I didn't obey. And the same thing can happen to you. You, you got gifts, but you have to obey the Lord. And sometimes God will tell you to call somebody else up in the job or maybe talk to somebody on the job or whatever. It's important for you to obey because you don't know what kind of condition that person may be in. It's so important. So anyway, let me, don't let me, I just want to wrap this up right fast. So, um, so he said, prevalent, he said, the spirit of rebellion. Spirits of rebellion. The second one, he says, spirits of unforgiveness. I said, wow, man. No wonder some is not getting the help. Wow, y'all hear what I'm saying? He said there were spirits of unforgiveness. What that means is this. Some have carried hurts and wounds for so long. Some have carried anger for so long. They made it a part of their lives. And so, now, here's how a spirit of unforgiveness will work. The spirit of unforgiveness, see, I'm, I'm exposing them. And and uh, because God wants to help His people, here's how our spirit of unforgiveness work. He will tell them to, or He will try and make them justify that wrong. It was wrong what they did, and this is how He's talking. But so the person don't understand that a spirit is there talking, and so the, the comes to the mind that was wrong. I'm not going to forgive them. You know, if you forgive them, they're just going to go right back and do the same thing. That's not your worry. Your concern is to obey God. Isn't that right? Don't go through some rationale. Because when you do, you're simply agreeing with demons. And so they're going to stay right there. And, and this, this happened, y'all. Sometimes when people come to the altar and those spirits start working, they start talking because they're scared they're going to be cast out. So they start talking to that person, talking to that person. And if they talk long enough, that person shut down. And when that person shut down, you can't help them. That's how they work. That's how they work. What they're doing is keeping the person from getting the help that they need so they can grow, grow closer to God spiritually. That's how they work. That's one of the ways how they work. They will continually, that hurt or that thing, they'll bring it up, keep right on saying. And I know how it works because I remember one time when God was talking to me, this was years ago, about some, somebody had done something to me. And then I said, okay, God, I forgive. So, no, that wouldn't work. What, what happened was, I said, God, if there's anything in my heart, that da, 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 I want you to show it. So then the Lord showed me a, this, this person. Immediately, that spirit Begin to lie to me to justify my attitude. And I had to catch myself because it was taking me around and around. And I was like, wait a minute. I just asked God if there was anything. And why am I going to reason with him when he gives me? That was the only thing that broke that thing. He made me say, no, 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 don't, don't. If you ask me, you ask me insincerely, then don't go and argue with me when I show you where the area is. So then, thank you, Jesus. Look at said, thank you, Jesus. I had to humble myself, and then God broke that thing just like that. God don't have a problem, saints. He can break anything off of us. But those spirits, the way they do, that unforgiving spirit will make you reason to, so that he can stay there. Remember, he don't want to come out. And he don't want you to know that he's a spirit, so he'll keep re making you reason. And so as long as you reason, that means he's going to sit right there. He'll be here next week. He'll be here week after late. Because what he's saying is that I don't want to come out. But once that person recognized, that's a demon trying to keep me from the blessings of God. And you say, I'm going to cooperate with God. Then things start to happen. Then the Holy Spirit starts to work. 
and he started to set free. And you may have been prayed for a lot of time and never gotten free. But if you hear what I'm saying today, and you will humble yourself, and you will say, God, I'm going to line up with you. God will do something for you that he's never done today, this very day. Come on, let's give God a praise. All right, I got two more, then I'm done. All right. I, that's why I, I, we uh, put aside some of the things that we normally do, because I really felt that uh, I wanted to just belabor the points. God said there's spirits there, and they're hoping not to be discovered. So I want you to know that some of the things that may be hindering some of you are demonic powers, and God want to break their power from off of your mind. Now, some of the ways demons influence how they affect the person Attitudes, the will, the emotions, the body. Sometimes there are spirits of infirmity. They affect the appetite. They affect the tongue, all right? They affect the tongue, the mind, the attitude, the will, the emotions, and the body. Sometimes a person pigs out and they can't seem to stop beating. And the demons of gluttony that will do that to you. I know I'm coming heavy, but I got to tell you so that it will go on record that I'm telling you some of the problems that the people are having so that you can begin to go to God. I want you to go to God and ask him, am I telling the truth? That's all I want you to do. I know I'm telling the truth. Go to him and ask him. And what he's going to tell you is, that, yeah, you're telling the truth. Because I got it from God. That's why I'm believing the point. So, so now, if demons affect the appetite, God may be saying to you fast, and you just keep eating, 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 eating. I'm telling you the truth. I really am telling you the truth, saints. What you have to do is discern if you can't fast and you're not on medicine, you may be suffering from a demon of gluttony. And that spirit will keep you eating and eating, especially if God may say, I want you to sacrifice. I want you to fast. And you say, I just can't fast. I just can't fast. Ask God to deliver you from a spirit of gluttony and watch and see don't you fast. You can be able to fast. Okay, that's, a, that's how he deals with the appetite. Another, how he deals with the will. We've talked about that, the will, God said, do so and so. And let's say the, the pastor says, okay, here, case in point. The Lord said to me, he said, bring the people together for prayer often. I was talking to the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what, give me something for this year that, I, that we can really keep in mind and obey you. This was some few years back. And he said, bring the people together for prayer often. So what I did was, I said, this is what God said. We had about a third of the people come. Well, what happened to the others? Were they saints? They didn't understand. And that's why I'm trying to take time to share with you. They didn't understand. Some had real justifiable reasons, but some just were in rebellion. So I understood that. But we can only go at the pace and the appointed time that God tries to help us to teach certain things, but this is the time because we're about to go over now and God wants those spirits dealt with. He doesn't want those spirits to be leaving. So God was saying uh, they affect certain areas. So they affect the appetite. Sometimes people can't fast, just them themselves or sacrifice. Sometimes they affects the will where a person just, I don't care what he say, I'm not going to do it. Demons. All right. They affect the emotions. So a person get mad, man. They get mad and they just clamor and uh, rage. They just can't seem to control themselves. Demonic powers, if that has happened over a period of time. If it's happened since childhood, that means a spirit has gotten into a person's emotions. So that person now has to be delivered if they're going to actually experience that grace of God. But all of this, Jesus died for. 
All of this he died that we might be set free. None of it is foreign to him. God can do this thing so easily. We've watched and we've seen people delivered um, years and years ago. I've seen it happen. There's a few cases where we've been involved to help people uh, be delivered. And deliverance may take various form, forms. Sometimes uh, a spirit may be taken out and when he comes out, the person may drop like they're dead. Some spirits, not everyone. Some spirits may come out and makes people cough up. That's another. They may be gener I mean, uh, uh, traumatic spirits. Then some may come out with a scream. Some may come out with uh, convulsions. And I'm not here to spook you, but I just want you to understand it's real. Now, what Jesus didn't do, okay, we do it today because, you know, we, all, we, we, have, we, we know more than Jesus. What we do is we take them back into the room. We take them back in the room. We don't want them to be embarrassed. You know, you don't, you can't embarrass people. But Jesus, uh, he didn't have too much wisdom. So what he would do is deliver them, <laughs> deliver them with the crowds of hundreds and thousands of people. And so you got to say he didn't have very much wisdom like we have today, right? <laughs> Jesus didn't seem to be too concerned about their ego. I don't know why we're so concerned about people's ego. But there was a man thrown out. He convulsed and kicked him. He had him thrown him around and he was carrying on and finally he came out. But Jesus probably said, man, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to embarrass you, man. I really didn't mean to embarrass you. That, I'm, I'm just so sorry. I didn't know all that was going to happen. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Jesus said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Okay. Don't y'all throw no stones yet. Please come back next Sunday, all right? <laughs> I know I'm coming down heavy, but I, 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 I have to do this because God told me. He wants you to know that oftentimes people are being hindered and they don't understand who's hindered them. They don't understand, and so they continue to cooperate with demons unknown. Okay. Another area that demons get into is the tongue. That's when people can't stop talking about others. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They just keep talking about people. No matter how many warnings God gives, they go right back and do the same thing. It's a demon. Look at somebody say, it's a demon. I, 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 trust me, I really know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to be funny, but I know what I'm talking about. When a person, anything, area of your life, that when you know God is saying do differently, and you can't do it, but you keep sinning or doing something, that means there's something controlling you. That's what it means. So now, have I said enough? Is it time to shut up, y'all? I have to say what I have to say because God wants his people free. Come up here, Lamont. <laughs> Lamont going to testify a little bit of what I'm saying here. Okay, while he's coming here, two other spirits, and I ain't going to say much about them. He said they're religious spirits. Now, a religious spirit is a spirit that acts like it's something and it's not. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I ain't Jesus, so I'm saying, I'm so sorry. I got to tell you all this. But that's what he told me. He said, religious spirits. Man, I went to a place one time, there was a religious spirit. And that person was just praising God and carrying on just like, oh, man. They, I was like, boy, they, God says, it's religious spirit. I was like, what? Now, it's about a relationship. We must have a relationship with God. What do you mean? You know the people talking about in the, in the, what Jesus, when they stand before God, they're going to say to Jesus, oh, haven't I cast out demons in your name? Haven't I done many works in your name? Going in wonderful works. But the problem was, Jesus said, I never had a relationship with you. I never knew you. How do you get to know God? It's through a relationship. 
And, how, and a relationship can't be a real relationship if we don't hear and obey, right? So in other words, if I don't obey God, the things that he keeps telling me over and over again, we don't have much of a relationship. I, oh, he talks to me, but we don't have a good relationship. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Lighten up here. Don't, don't be too hard. I'm just I'm trying to make this point clear. It's a relationship. So that means... If I come to you and I'm singing, I can dance. Oh, my God, I done learned this, how to step. And people say, boy, that brother can step. Cut, cut my. But I won't obey God. But I won't obey God. You hear what I'm saying? It's a religious spirit. If I pretend to be something that I'm not. What you see is what you get. Where you see me now, when I'm back home, that's me. I ain't got nothing to hide. Isn't that right? Because I know if I do, God will expose it. That's what he's trying to do all of us. How did I get there? Boy, he worked on me. Yeah, he did. He worked on me. God is no joke. I mean, he, he'll, 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 he'll nurture you. He'll embrace you. He'll love on you and so on. But then he'll spank you. He's that way. He's a good God. I mean, what parent? Let, let me share this here. There's a, there's a family in the community here. They raised their children. I mean, they were a little bit strict, but they raised their children. And they disciplined them when they needed discipline. When the kids grew up and got grown, they were so mannerly. And all the whole community was talking about, this man sure raised his children right. They had such respect for them because they were raised right. Now, living word, let's say, let's say you go, you're in the ministry, you go and you go to somebody else's church, you know, just visiting. So you act up. And he, they, they, at the end, the pastor said, what church are you from? Don't tell them them word. <laughs> <laughs> because if you do, he's going to look at me like crazy. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm making a point, y'all. God, he's good. We are enjoying this glory. We're enjoying this presence, and we know God is with us, right? We want to represent him well. We want to represent him well. Let's be mannerly. Let's be orderly. Let's, when you hear, when we do something, let's do it together. Let's not do a few people here all the time, the few same, few faithful few. Let's do this thing together. God is pleased. Oh, how good and how perfect it is. Psalm 133, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, this is God's will. Okay, all right. So there's that religious spirit God wants to deal. He has to deal with that, so he's going to make it in. Last one is this here, spirits of infirmity. Spirits of infirmity attack the body, okay? Sometimes people have chronic sicknesses, and until that spirit of infirmity is cast out, sicknesses will prevail, but in the days ahead, God's going to deal with the religion. He's going to deliver from a religious spirit, a rebellious spirit, or from a spirit of unforgiveness, and all of those. And then when people dance, oh, Lord, it is beautiful. It is so beautiful. All right, I'm done. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is good. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My God, he's good. Woo. He delivered me from a spirit of anger. Man, that thing had to come out. He delivered me from that spirit, but, but, but prior to that, get the windows back, Mark. But prior to that, man, I tell you, that thing would flare up sometime. It was a rage. And I'd be so embarrassed. Embarrassed. And I was a Christian too. And when that happened, I was like, God. In the first year or two of pastorate, 
I still had that thing. <laughs> so one day I got upset with Betty, my wife. Man, I got so mad over a little petty stuff. So I got there, I was like, God, why in the world did I get so upset with this thing? It, it wasn't all of that. And that was the day I went before God. I was really crying out to the Lord. And then all of a sudden, God said, don't be afraid. Man, I felt like I was getting sick on my stomach, going to throw some. And I'd heard a little bit about, it's like, oh, God, what is this? So he said, don't be afraid. Nothing came out. But something did come out. After what I collapsed on the floor, that spirit was gone. And it never came back again. <laughs> but I tell you, everywhere I go, some people are ashamed when you, they say they had a demon. They're ashamed. They're like, oh, I don't want people to know I, you better let them get out, come out of that thing. You know? <laughs> tell them about Lamar. <laughs> you know what to say. <laughs> Hello, hello? Okay. <sighs> Where do I start? I'm not going to be long, I promise. But I, I just want to um, just piggyback on what Apostle was saying, how God was dealing with me. It started as a process of understanding. He started speaking to me about when I was in California visiting my brother. I told that story before. The first thing he did with me was just pour his presence on me like he loved me, right? Like, like I never experienced before. So it wasn't a question of his love for me, yeah. right? So he had to get that out of the way first. To let him know, despite what you're doing right now, I still love you. Yeah. Yeah. So that was how he came to me first. Then he started telling me about all the spirits out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pastor just men mentioned some. It's That's right. <laughs> thousands of spirits. And you might think it's little, but it's a spirit. Yeah. And one of the biggest things for me as a, as a child of God was feeling condemned all the time. Every time I came to church, I felt condemned, like I couldn't fully be who I was because of the things that I couldn't stop doing. Um, and then another time, it was I was sitting back on a Wednesday night, and I heard rebellion, like, Rebellion, because I, I was that everything Pastor talk about that was me, <laughs> and I could talk about it because I'm free of some of those things. I still got issues that I'm dealing with. I'd be first to tell you, and I'm looking forward to God delivering me from those things as well. But I've come out of a lot of things, and um, But rebellion was one of the bigger ones. Um, I, you know, I didn't want to come to church on Wednesdays. I ain't going to church on Wednesday. I don't got time. You know, I, I gotta go home. I've been working all day. Come on now. We all have felt that in our heads. <laughs> Sunday, why we gotta stay in church three o'clock on Sundays? I ain't going. To Oh, we got revival this week. Uh, I might go to one night. I ain't going all four nights. <laughs> that was me. So he had to take care of that. And then after he took care of that one, the other one started to come out of me. You know, and it, it was once you, once you know, once the demons are, are exposed, they have no right to be in you. They have no authority, so you don't have to. Di you don't have to stay in that place. You can. You can call them out yourself. You have no authority. That's what I did. Some of them I got delivered up here. Others I did in my living room, and I felt them come out of me because I told them they'd have no authority in my body. I'm a child of God. He loved me. I repent for all my sins. If you do all of that, I forgive everyone. They don't have authority to stay in you. You don't have to deal with it. So I just say all that to say that demons are real, you know. They're not the scary things you see on TV about the fantasy demons. These are spirits, evil spirits that control your mind, the way you feel about others, and the way you feel about yourself. And 
once they are exposed, they don't have no right in you. And God's love for you is going to, like he said, that, that part easy. The hard part is understanding that you have those things in you. Once they are, you acknowledge, and even if you don't know, you can very easily say, God, please make me aware of anything unclean spirit in me. I don't want it in me. I don't have no authority over me. Please deliver me. And he can do it just like that. And I just feel the anointing on me right now. Just, woo! Thank you, Lord. He want everybody free. And um, the last thing I want to share is just, I want to, I got to put this out there because I'm learning. I'm, this is something I think God really wanted me to understand. As easy as they are to come out of you, they can come right back. So you have to be aware and be in God's word and replenish those old spirits that's been in you for so long with, with his word. So you don't have to, you can kind of be discernment of things, some of your old habits that kind of put you back in those situations because they can come right back. But he's more than willing to get rid of them again. But just be aware that just because you got delivered doesn't mean it's gone forever because they can very easily come back. Um, and I can say last weekend, last Sunday, God just, I don't know, he pulled it on heavy on me. And I can tell, like, some things left me just that instant last week that I can tell instantly that I'm, my mind is different. I feel better. I'm back on track. And I give God the glory. Everybody, let's stand and give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. God is a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He sets people free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He set people free. And once and, 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 and that's that's so important. And, but I wanted to uh, tap in on a little bit, a little bit of what Lamar said. You don't have to be afraid. Now, one of the things that happens is once you get saved, you ought to press to get filled with the spirit. That is very important because demons don't come back in when you're filled. They will come and tap at your door and they have to work to try to work back in. The second thing is this year, when you allow God to heal you of the thing that opened the door for them, that hinders them from being able to get back in. So that's why we ought to come to the altar and let God heal us of everything we need. Isn't that right? Shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Like Lamont said, God loves you. He loves us all.